More Than Conquerors Ministries presents Robin Gould, pastor of Victory Christian Center in Charlotte, North Carolina, with a dynamic message that will enrich your life. Living in a natural world, having to interact with natural people about natural things all the time makes it difficult to live the spirit life. It's something we must decide to do and press into. In fact, it makes the difference between victory and defeat. The degree to which we operate in the spirit will determine the degree of success that we experience. Pastor Gould sheds light on how much the Bible points to the fact that believers are supposed to live the spirit life. He then teaches what we need to do to accomplish it. If you are tired of struggling as a Christian or just desire to be strengthened in this area, take advantage of the powerful four-part CD series, The Spirit Life. Purchase this special series for only $27. Order by debit or credit online at vccenter.net or by calling 704-602-6011. Lord, if it's you, get me out of this mess. Lord, if it's you, save us. Can't you see what's going on? Lord, if it's you, do something about the storm. But that's not what Peter said. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, let me come out there. What, what does that say about Peter? Peter had been pondering some of these works of Jesus. Peter had been tasting it. Oh, man, I want to do some of that. Oh, boy, I, I just, I just want, want, want to be just like Jesus. I want to experience some of these things. So the first thing that came out of Peter's mouth, if it's you, let me come out there. That seems to be a, a strange statement in a situation like that. Except you really want some supernatural stuff in your life. You really want to enjoy some new things. Yeah, How many can stand for some new things in your life? Amen. Yeah, some new experiences. So, Lord, if it's you, let me come out there. Can you imagine what the other 11 may have thought when they heard Peter say that? Peter, you're crazy. You know, people, people will call you crazy when, you hear you, hear you, hear, when they hear you say certain things that blows their mind away. That doesn't make sense to them. That's why you got to be careful who you let your vision out to. Got to be careful about who you share things with because everybody can't, can't accept it. They can't see it. It's too big. It doesn't make sense. It's too dangerous. It's unknown territory. You've never been there before. I don't know anybody that ever tried that. They didn't know anybody that ever tried that. Peter, what are you saying? They've been afraid because of seeing Jesus walk on the water. Who is this? It's the ghost. No, it's me. Well, if it's you, let me come out there. Peter, are you crazy? Peter, have you lost your mind? No, I haven't lost my mind. I want what Jesus has. I want to do what he does. Anybody want to do what he does? Anybody want to have what he has? Amen. Yeah, I'm talking just real, real talk this morning. So if, it, if it's you, let me come out on there on the water. So, of course, it was Jesus. So Jesus could not deny himself, right? Yeah, it's me, Peter. Yep. Come. Isn't that wonderful? That's what Jesus is saying to all of us. Come. Leave that place of safety and comfort. Come. There's things I have for you. There's things awaiting you. There's supernatural things. The works that I do, you'll do also. Come. The blessings of Abraham, they're waiting to come upon you and overtake you. Come. Come. Because I can't take you any further. I can't give you anything else as long as you're in your boat. Get out. Come. Come on, talk to me. Amen. So Peter, at the amaze of the other 11, took that right or left foot, whichever one he took, man, put his hand on the boat and took that foot, that, that first step over there, 
You know? And can you imagine the 11? Oh, oh, Peter. Isn't that what we do? <laughs> Peter, whoa. The other stuff. Tell you, man, Jesus is saying, come. He's telling all you today, come. There's some area he's calling you to come. And he doesn't mind you putting the toe out there a little apprehensively, the foot, and you'll see he's right there holding it. Then the next one. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? But you got to get out of your boat. Oh, I got an okay life, but there's so much more. God never intended for you to reach a point where you don't want any more of his blessings. He wants to keep blessing you so you can be a blessing. He wants to bless you so much. For he just takes you from glory to glory, not just in your spirit and not just in your health and in your mind, but in your material and financial areas of your life. You can just keep giving, keep giving, keep blessing. There's a child over there needs some shoes. I'll buy him 10 pair. There's a child over there. The mom wants to put him in school. I'll write this $8,000 check for the, for the year for that child. Come on, talk to me. There, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a senior citizen that, that needs, a, that needs a, 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 a handicap ramp put on the house. I'll, I'll get a contractor and pay the $8,000, pay the $7,000. And you want to be satisfied with what you have right now? And God has so much. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The silver and the gold belongs to God. got to get out of the boat and you have to have a right motive a right heart a right heart creating me a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit on the inside of me amen somebody and so there's so much that God has for us but it's on the outside of our boats isn't that right God wants to do signs, wonders, and confirm his word, but we have to get out of the boat. God's servants always had signs. Isn't that right? God's servants always had signs, always had signs. The things that validated, the things that substantiated, the things that proved that this was one of God's servants were the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the supernatural. Am I right or wrong? It wasn't the fact that they graduated from Moore Roberts University. It wasn't the fact that they graduated from, from Raymond Bible Training Center. It wasn't the fact that they tra- graduated from more than Conquest College. It, it, listen, man, that, that is not what God uses. We have to do that for man. We're in this world. But what validates a man or woman of God are the signs, the wonders, the supernatural. Come on, talk to me. That's how we get accredited. That's our accreditation, the signs and the wonders. In Acts chapter 2, it says, Jesus of Nazareth approved, and the Amplified says, accredited by God with signs and wonders. Moses was a one-man invasion team coming into Pharaoh and all of Egypt. One-man invasion team with signs and wonders and miracles. Elijah, why halt ye between two opinions? If God is God, let's serve him. If Baal is God, let's serve Baal. The God that answers by fire. Joshua, sun, stand still. Moon, don't you move another inch. Elisha picked up the mantle of Elijah. Where is the God of Elijah? 
Gideon says, if God is with me, where are his miracles? God accredits or confirms or validates his servants with signs and wonders and miracles. And those things are outside of the boat. The late Dr. Sumrall said this to me, and he probably wrote it in one of his books, but he said, Robin, the man that stays in motion will see the gift of faith. The man that stays in motion will see the gift of faith. You know there's nine gifts of the Spirit. Hello? Amen. How many gifts are there? Nine. Nine. What are they? Revelation gifts, power gifts, what else? Vocal gifts. Okay. Revelation means you see something or know something. Power means you do something. Vocal means you say something, right? There's three of each, three in each category. Now, the man that stays in motion will see the gift of faith. So the man that stays in the vote doesn't get the gift of faith. The man that stays in the boat, he'll always be thanking God and worshiping and clapping for what he's doing through somebody else. And we should always do that. I said we should always do that. But I'm going to say it for the third time. The day should come where people can worship and clap and praise God because God is doing something in you. They're outside of the boat, church. I said they're outside of the boat. What, what's outside of the boat? Everything you need, want, and God wants to give you. All the miracles, signs, wonders, the blessings, the fruit of the land, the good of the land. Are, are you here? All right, so. He didn't say, calm the storm and, and save us. He says, let me out there. Isn't that right? Amen. Now, now we're not talking about being foolish. They're putting this on the screen. They're ne we're not talking about being foolish. All right? So, so make sure you try to write this down or at least write the first six words down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? We're not talking about being foolish and just going out here and doing something crazy. But rather, we're talking about getting out of complacency, contentment, and realize you're ambassadors for Christ and act on what God, act on what God tells you. And as you act on what God tells you, you can't expect what? Results. So we're not talking about just doing something just to do it. That's foolishness. And you can't call that faith. Something has to bear witness with your spirit. Right. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And he says, I lead them out. I lead them where? Out. I lead them out of what? The boat. I lead them out. The Bible says the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we're sons of God. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. We're talking about acting on what God begins to put on the inside of you, what God begins to prompt you to act in, what God puts on the inside of you from the word or through meditation or through praying in tongues, or God begins to put on the inside of you because you're catching faith from somebody. The Bible talks about a spirit of faith. You can catch that. Just like you can catch a spirit of doubt. Are you challenged in your health? Would you like someone to agree with you concerning healing? Victory Christian Center now has a healing room where those challenged in their health can come and be ministered to. Someone will offer encouragement from the Word of God and pray with those attending a session. Persons participating will have an opportunity to relax and soak up the word. Reading material relative to health and healing will also be available. This service is free and open to the public. To make an appointment, call the VCC Church office at 704-602-6010. 
Sessions are held Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Healing Room is located in the VCC Dome, 7228 King's Ridge Drive, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28217. You hang around the wrong people, you're going to start doubting. You're going to doubt yourself. You're going to doubt God. You're going to doubt your potential. Are you following what I'm saying? You hang around faith people, man. I'm telling you, hang around the right people of God. You hang around the people that got God down on the inside of them. You hang around them for any length of time. All of a sudden, the same spirit they're talking in, the same spirit they're walking in, you're going to begin talking with that spirit, walking with that spirit. Are you hearing this today? A spirit of faith thinks a certain way, talks a certain way, believes a certain way, acts a certain way, looks a certain way. And you can catch it. It's more to it just knowing about faith. You've got to have faith. Just don't know about faith. There is a spirit of faith, and that spirit of faith can cause some people to call you cocky, but yet you're just as humble. Amen. Well, they look at you as arrogant because of the words that come out of your mouth. If God be for me, who can be against me? The Lord is on my side. When my enemies, even my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and they fall. The gates of hell don't prevail against me. No white man, red man, yellow man, rich man, poor man can stop a child of God. Now, see, now listen, they'll call you cocky, but all you're doing is talking God talk. You are an ambassador of Christ. You are a child of the Most High God. You have a spirit of faith on the inside of you. Amen. So you, you got to understand it's important who you hang around. Amen. This spirit of faith is on the inside of me. I didn't get it overnight. God began to expose me and and, 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 and connect me. Are you following what I'm saying? Sure, I had to feed my spirit. Sure, I had to meditate the word. I had to pray and talk. But also, God brought me and a God in my life. God began to expose me. I'm like, man, I'm catching something. I'm, and it's not the cold either. I'm, I'm catching something. I'm catching something. I'm catching something from this man of God. Sometimes you don't realize you caught it until you get in a situation and something comes out of you. It just comes out of you. And, and you, realize, you realize what you just said. Are you hearing that? See, Joshua and Caleb, we only, God only identified Caleb as having a different spirit, but Joshua had it too. Joshua had it too. See, and you need to, you need to find somebody who got a spirit of faith. You got to connect with them, man, so we, you won't lose what you, all, what, what you already have, and you'll increase in what you already have. Amen. It does matter who you run around every day, who you, who you texting and emailing and, and all that kind of stuff, and who you talking with. Amen, everybody. Never hang around people that say, let, let, let's just be real. That you better run from them. Let's just be real. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. See, see, see this, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Let's just be real. Got to go. I put my pearls before a swine. See, see when, you, when you talk, let's just be real, you're carnal. And to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. But, but you got to look at what's going on. Got to go. Got to go. I walk by faith, not by sight. I look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. See, that's the spirit of faith. And some people say, you know, arrogant, cocky, haughty, you know, stuck on himself, who he think he is. Well, why don't you ask him who he think he is? 
ask me who you think I am. And I'm just going to say I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm an heir of God. I'm a king and a priest. I'm more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ. And remember, I'm more than a conqueror through him. I identify with Christ is what we're saying. See, and that's what God is looking for out of his church, out of his body. That's us, right? Everybody say, that's me. That's me. So we're not talking about being, being foolish and all that kind of stuff. We, we're talking about, we're talking about uh, following the spirit of God. Isn't that right? And, and Jesus said the Holy Spirit will receive of him and share it with us. He'll take of the Father and share it with us. That's one reason, that's one way that the Spirit of God glorifies Jesus. See, if you read it properly in John 16, Jesus says the Holy Spirit will glorify me because he will receive of mine and share it with you. See, so the Holy Spirit wants to glorify Jesus by taking, uh, taking what Jesus is saying and what he's doing. He wants to glorify him by dropping it into Minister Haley's heart. And then it's up to Minister Haley to communicate that to his wife, you know, and they get on the same page. Isn't that right? Amen. Because he can't be stepping out and his wife don't want him to step out. That's right. Amen. That's good. That's good. I'll try it again. <laughs> Mr. Haley just can't be stepping out and, he, and, and Miss, Mrs. Haley don't want him to step out. Amen. There's got to be some peace in the house. Amen. She got to want to keep cooking. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Amen. See, some of us knuckleheads, you know, we just get some idea and we want to run with it and we're married. And we act like we're not married. And our wives have to pay the price for a knucklehead decision. You, you, you got to get on one accord. And that's the same with the wife. She came, ah, God told me. Well, you better talk to me too. <laughs> we got to get on the same page here. Because you're not going to use God told you to run my life and to run this household. Come on, talk to me. Amen. But the same is true with the man. Got to be a great, I I'm talking to somebody's household today. And you know who you are. You've been around here long enough. You know the story. When God told me to come to Charlotte, North Carolina, I was in prayer. I had the invitation to come to take over the Methodist Church where I met Doby and Richard and some others, Jackie Stead and others that, that are still members of this church and Gwen Wallace and others. You know, when I first got here, I mean, before, before getting here, I was in prayer, had the invitation to come, and I said, and I, I just knew it in my spirit. I can't say I heard an audible voice or none. I only heard the audible voice of God three times in my life. That was not one of them. And I, I knew in my heart, God was saying, go to Charlotte. Got out of prayer, went out to the room, said, hey, uh, Marlon, I said, I said, God wants us to go to Charlotte. She said, I don't want to what? Go. I don't want to go. I said, God wants us to go to Charlotte. She looked at me, I don't want to go. Okay. I turned right around, went into the bedroom, and I said these words, almost a quote. God, just like you spoke to me, you speak to her. Amen. Amen. You just can't step out and you married. And if your wife or husband, if they pray and are attuned with God, they will give God an opportunity to let God speak to you. And then when you share something with them, it'll bear witness with them. They'll have peace. Are you understand? I'm talking about if they're men and women of God. If they're men and women of God, they won't just be resisting you just to resist. Out of their own selfishness and fear and pride, et cetera, trying to control. Boy, I'm talking to somebody today. I'm in somebody's house. Don't, don't lift your hand, but I'm in your house. And, and I'm in there by the Spirit of God. It's not me. It's by the Spirit of God. God wants you to correct some things. 
God wants you to change some things. Are you following me? And then a month later, Marlon says, we're driving down Peoria, whatever street it was in Tulsa, and Marlon turns to me and said, I'm ready to go. And I said, go where? <laughs> That's the God's truth, go where? Because I left it with God. Amen. And when you leave it with God, you shouldn't be tormented with it. Amen. I think I'll say it again. When you leave something with God, that situation shouldn't torment you. Amen. It's the old saying, faith without rest is unbelief. Amen. If you can't rest after you have released your faith, you're still in unbelief. She says, I'm ready to go. Go where? Go to Tulsa. And she'll go to Charlotte. And, and she says, she said, it was like a banana peel. Is that right, Mama? It's like a banana peel. Like Tulsa just peeled off of her. And she was ready to go. So I said, okay. And that's how we got to Charlotte. I'm out of time. Okay, let's, let's pick up this next week. Y'all hungry? <laughs> let's stand to our feet. Get out of the boat. Say it out loud. Get out of the boat. Say, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. In Jesus' name, I'm getting out. Living in a natural world, having to interact with natural people about natural things all the time, makes it difficult to live the spirit life. It's something we must decide to do and press into. In fact, it makes the difference between victory and defeat. The degree to which we operate in the spirit will determine the degree of success that we experience. Pastor Gould sheds light on how much the Bible points to the fact that believers are supposed to live the spirit life. He then teaches what we need to do to accomplish it. If you are tired of struggling as a Christian or just desire to be strengthened in this area, take advantage of the powerful four-part CD series, The Spirit Life. Purchase this special series for only $27. Order by debit or credit online at vccenter.net or by calling 704-602-6011. The program you view today is available on CD and DVD. DVDs are available for $16 and CDs for $7. Please indicate the item number when ordering. Call 704-602-6011 to order by credit card or write MTCM PO Box 240433, Charlotte, North Carolina 28224. We appreciate the gifts of support from our viewing audience who help us get the good news of God's Word to people in need. Checks should be made payable to More Than Conquerors Ministries or simply MTCM. To support the ministry through online giving, log on to www.vccenter.net. Address all correspondence to MTCM, P.O. Box 240433, Charlotte, North Carolina, or email us at churchoffice at vccenter.net. You are invited to join us at The Dome, located at 7228 Kings Ridge Drive, for Sunday morning services at 10 o'clock a.m. Sunday and Wednesday evening services are held at 7 o'clock p.m. September through May and 7.30 p.m. June through August. Services and classes for children and youth are held at the Victory Youth Building located at 7224 Old Pineville Road. Call 704-602-6010 for information about daytime Bible class. Don't miss the next life-changing message on the More Than Conquerors telecast.